Hey, what's up everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the past weeks, I kind of streamed a little bit, uh, kind of got back into the streaming and many people asked what's the settings that I stream with and today I'm going to show you the settings that I stream with. Of course, I stream with OBS and I'm going to go into the settings which I use and which maybe you should use. I'm going to explain in a little bit, but uh, a very important step is, let's put this aside, a very important step is gaming mode turn that thing off just go into the search bar and write game then you have game mode settings go into it and turn it off because when you have it on then of course windows is gonna try to concentrate all the resources into your game and less to your obs so by doing that your stream quality is gonna be worse because well there will be almost no resources for obs to encode your stream so turn this off now let's come back to OBS, uh, let's go into the settings and in the general you don't really change much here. I tend to leave it on the default one and on the stream tab I stream actually to restream, which restream yo, restream yo, I like to tell to say is restream yo. I stream to this restream yo and then restream yo streams my video to where I want, to Twitch, YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So I just need to, to stream to one site and then this site streams to other platforms because if you're gonna stream only to twitch then uh, if you're kind of new to streaming then yeah forget about views youtube maybe it's a little easier to gain views but then yeah if you want twitch as well you can't really so by this way i can stream to the platforms that i want and take in mind to where you stream is very important and i'm gonna tell you why let's go into the output tab and here is my streaming encoding settings. Let's come here fast to the bitrate. You see I have 10,000 kilobits. So this is 10 megabytes. I have more than enough bandwidth. I have like 40 megabytes upload. So I can I could go even like 20, 20,000 kilobytes, 30,000 kilobytes. But I choose to went to 10. Why? Because on YouTube for 1080p, you kind of need 12 megabytes so this is going 12 megabytes is going to be around 12000 kilobytes but the problem is on mixer the maximum allowed is 10000 kilobytes and another pro problem on twitch the maximum allowed is 6500 so you get what i'm saying this bitrate matters to where you're going to stream if you're going to stream only to youtube then come here and choose 12,000 of course if you have enough bandwidth but if you're gonna stream only to twitch then come and choose 6,500 this is the maximum you're gonna be able to stream to twitch if you're gonna choose more like I did to 10,000 then twitch is also gonna allow that but it's gonna decrease the resolution of your stream I'm gonna show you in a minute but uh, take this in mind and you'll also want to enable CBR rate control. CBR means this bitrate is going to be always constant. Even if you stream like a still image like right now or you stream the video then the bitrate is going to be constant and you want it to be constant because when it's going up and down then uh, you'll get worse quality when you're playing FPS games. Also one important notice is turn and force streaming service encoder settings because like I said Twitch allows only 6,500 kilobits. But if you go to 10,000 and without this turned on, then uh, Twitch is just gonna say, well, uh, no. So you're not gonna be able to stream to Twitch. Your stream is gonna be live, but when you're gonna go to Twitch to check it, it's just gonna give you an, an error. So turn this on. You see as well on encoder, I, I stream with NVIDIA encoder and not with CPU. CPU is x264. But streaming with CPU, it's uh, just not good because you're gonna get a big impact on your FPS and uh, sometimes the stream is just gonna be choppy and it's gonna be stopping because it's gonna be out of resources. Your CPU is gonna try to give you the most FPS and then OBS is gonna try to take that resources from your CPU. I have an i7 CPU, so it has more than enough resources, but uh, if you want to stream with CPU, you'll have to limit your FPS into the games. But if you want to have unlimited FPS, then uh, stream with your GPU. Then into the keyframe interval, 
I choose two, but you can leave it to zero because for example, Mixer just allows one preset. I choose quality because I didn't really notice, at least on YouTube, I didn't really notice big improvement into the max quality and quality, but there was kinda, not big, but there was a small difference into the FPS. So quality wasn't so much, but FPS was a little bit. So I just went for quality. I'm gonna show you in a second how the stream was looking, streaming with these settings. Profile, you'll want to choose high, look ahead, just disable it because it's gonna impact your FPS a lot but you'll not see so much improvements in your quality. Psycho visual tuning, well here, the impact on FPS is not that big, but the quality is better when you have it on. And max B frame, of course, too. This was actually by default. On audio, well, this is where you choose your desktop audio, your microphone. And here on the video, it's also important which resolution you want to stream. Of course, you could stream to 720p, this is more than enough if your PC is not that good. But uh, nowadays in 2020, kinda everyone wants 1080p and even more. In 2020 already 1080p is kinda outdated. Downscale filter, uh, you can choose 36 sample and FPS, 60 FPS or 30, depends which you wanna stream. But if you're gonna stream FPS games and like racing car games, then uh, you'll want 60 FPS and not 30 FPS because 30 FPS is gonna be, yeah, kinda choppy. But then, yeah, the impact on your performance between 30 FPS and 60 FPS is, is huge. And then also one very important notice is here into the advanced tab, which not many people mention it or many people mention it, but wrong. At least I think it's wrong. Many people come here and say color space goes 709 and color range full and not partial. I, well, I went with both and there is not difference. Just leave it on default color space 601 and color range partial. But one very important step is here into the process priority. By default, it's set on normal, but come here and choose above normal or even high. Because like I've said at the beginning, if you, you leave it to normal, then when you play a game, your game is gonna be set at high. So it's gonna get all the resources from your PC to give you better FPS. And then for OBS, there will be left almost nothing and your stream is gonna be kinda bad. If you go to high, of course, then your FPS, yeah, might decrease a little bit. Above normal, it's kinda the sweet spot, let's say it like that. And then another thing that I changed here is turned on enable browser sources hardware acceleration. Browser sources is, let's turn this off. You see here browser sources. If I go to properties, then this is my chat. Open it into the browser. And if someone writes something into my chat, I'm gonna do a test, test. You see it here, then it should appear here. So it appeared in my stream. So this source, this chat is gonna be using your hardware acceleration, which you want to have that on. I think this video is already quite long. Oh, actually, I set this to normal, not to above normal, was actually to above normal, maybe I misclicked. Leave it to above normal. Now let me show you a stream or my the last stream that I did, which I did with these settings. Let's go to my channel. And you see here streamed six days ago. Yeah, six days ago, but I didn't change the settings from that day. So let's press onto the stream. I'm gonna mute it so we can still hear me. Uh, you see it's 1080p and the quality on YouTube is all right, but it could be better. But that's YouTube encoding at 1080p. If you're gonna stream at 1440p, then the quality is gonna be mm, perfect. But you see the quality, it's more than okay -ish. Let's skip a little bit more. Let's go actually into the open, because into the open, oh, this is actually says go. Let's go back a little bit more to, to, to Call of Duty because it requires more of, of your PC to encode. And you see the quality is more than okay. I want to, uh, to show something that's, that requires a little more. I mean, yeah, this is in the open, so your PC is gonna struggle. And you see at the, at the top, let me put full screen. You see at the top, FPS 120, 110, 90. So the FPS is more than good. 
Now actually let's skip a little bit where actually I played CSGO, I forgot I played CSGO on this stream and you see the quality on CSGO, it's also pretty on point. Let's not forget that this is YouTube and YouTube, the quality at 1080p is not that that great. Let's go to Twitch where I have streamed also to Twitch at the same time and go videos, last stream and here the quality is so 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 much better just look at it it's so crisp so good the quality is just so much better on twitch but here is the thing i streamed at 10,000 kilobits and you see now that the video is not live anymore it shows me quality available 1080p 60 fps but when i'm streaming so when the video is live the maximum available is going to be 720p with 10,000 kilobytes. That's why I've said that it's very important to wear your stream because if you're going to choose 10,000 kilobytes, then the maximum available when you're streaming is going to be 720. Then once the video is not live anymore and it's in the backup, then it's going to be the full quality, which look at this, it looks great. That's why if you gonna stream only to Twitch, just choose maximum 6,500. But if you're gonna stream to, to YouTube, you can choose 10,000 or even 12,000. But go, going back to the quality, just look at this quality. I think it looks great. On Twitch, the encoder is just better than on YouTube. Now let's skip a little bit to where I played CS. So you see the quality, how it was on CSGO. And again, I think the quality is it's perfect. But then again, the video is not live. So when the video is live, the bitrate are lowered. But if you plan to stream live to Twitch and then do highlights on Twitch and then export them to YouTube, then this is going to be perfect because just check this quality is just great. I'm really, really impressed by the quality on Twitch. On YouTube doesn't look that that great uh, at least at 1080p youtube to be looking great it needs to be 1440p or above but anyway i hope it was kind of clear and i know i kind of talks here and there but i tried to kind of to explain and to show why it's important to have the right bitrate and why it's important to have uh, some options like process priority increased or decreased if you want to get into the streaming then these settings are kind of the best settings to use because it's not going to use a lot of resources and your quality is going to be very good of course this was for 1080p but you can choose the same settings but for 720p of course it's all up to you i hope the video was useful for you guys if it was useful then don't forget to leave that big like down below and i see you on the next one